Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at the SAT reading section. More specifically, questions that revolve around vocabulary being used in a certain contexts. This is going to be the first of a two-part video series, mini-series, and we're going to look at the first kind of vocabulary and context questions which revolve around the replacement of certain words in certain contexts. So you will often notice that these kind of questions often use the term most nearly and they use it for each and every type of these uh, questions. And so your first impulse may be why, because, well, why, why use it? It's confusing, it distracts you, you don't like it. And so essentially you just have an angry Tarot asking why. And actually, they have really good reason. That's because synonyms cannot always exactly capture what a word means. Now, to provide you with an example, stop gallivanting around. I could say stop moving around, I could say stop traveling around, and I would not lose the core idea of the passage, which is what I'm asking you to stop moving around. But I would lose some additional detail that the word gallivanting gives us. Gallivanting gives us the idea that the person who is moving around is moving to seek pleasure, to waste time. Moving and traveling do not convey the same essence, and so although they can be used interchangeably with little error, they're not quite the same. And therefore, we use the term most nearly just to recognize this, do not really bother about the phrase It's if it confuses you. It really just is asking you to choose the closest word that represents a certain word's meaning and context. And it's very important here to remember that we're talking about vocabulary in context. Context being the key word over here. If I said poke your nose, you would, you would think of physically touching your nose as you see in the picture. But if I gave you context, which you have to always consider and the context was to not poke your nose into my affairs this is not the picture that should come to your head it should be about me asking you not to indulge into my affairs to stay out of my business essentially and that's why context is very important to these kind of questions because words often have multiple meanings and we have to select a synonym that represents one of these meanings now Let's look at what these questions tend to look like. So they will have in line X, Y, Z, the word engaged most nearly means or most nearly means. Yeah. And so you're going to look and identify the word they're asking you to find the meaning for, which is engaged. And before you look at the options, you should always refer back to the context. You have located line 35 there. So we know that that line above here is 34. We already see the word engaged. In order to save time, I think it's the best idea just to read line 34, 30, 34, sorry about that. But it's often a very good idea and it's very important in most cases that you at least leave the line before and the line after as well to get the complete context of the way in which the word is going to be used. So let's read that. Mr. Mills was raised a common man, but destined unfathomable amounts of success. In his humble beginnings in Arizona, he was engaged as a trainee servant. We found the word engaged over here. Uh, at a local restaurant in, named Joey's Burger Place. It was from here he developed a keen mind for da 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 da. So here we just essentially have a sort of biography of an individual who... Um, started as a as just a trainee servant and got on to do great things i suppose and so they're so they're asking you to find the find the synonym the most closely would represent engage and in this case he was engaged as a trainee servant so right before i look at the options i should be thinking about what the word would mean in this context so i'm already thinking along the lines of employed received an internship as etc etc now I do see my word employed in the options and the A, B and C really did not make sense because betrothed is to actually engage the place of ring, interacted, not really, attacked, makes no sense either and so it's definitely employed. So this is one of the easier types where you can easily conclude that it is the employed. And 
So it's relatively simple to solve. You just need to read the question. Do not read the options, however. And although it's not imperative, I strongly advise it because, as I said, words have multiple meanings. And if in your mind you think that the word should mean one of the options, you may try to force fit force fit that option into the context even though it may not necessarily be the best fit it might fit but not be the best fit and therefore in order to just eliminate the possibility of bias it's better that you read the passage before you read the options and then you're going to obviously read the context and the lines you're going to think of what the word means even before you look at the options and then if you find your word is something similar select it and move ahead it's most likely correct now you'll often encounter questions where you're actually confused you may be like okay it's a but i also think it's c and sometimes even between three so what do you do then let's look at the sentence the students engaged with the teachers so engaged most nearly means we we see this is a classroom environment it's probably a lesson so we're thinking interactive interested participated in discussion etc and we see both interacted and interested are there as options. So now we're quite confused actually. We are like, is it B or is it C then? And the best way to move ahead with this is first to eliminate options, which it definitely isn't. So let's get rid of A and D over here. So now it's either interacted or interested. So we now proceed, we try to place each of these words in the context. We see the students interacted with the teacher or the students interested with the teacher. The latter quite does not make sense, so we can quickly conclude that it's not interested and it's interacted. So we have looked at it, which one fits semantically and grammatically and we see it's interacted. But this may not always work. So it's often always a better idea to look at the context in which it is and see which one's more suitable. We see the students being inter interested with the teacher does not does not quite fit, fit the context. They would be interested with the lesson perhaps she's, that she's teaching, but not with the teacher as such. Interacted kind of makes more sense. It fits the context that they're interacting with the teacher, they're actively engaging with her. And therefore, even if we don't look at semantics, which can be quite a dodgy strategy at points, we can still arrive at the correct answer, which is be interacted. Now, another problem that you will often encounter is sometimes you might not know the meaning of a word they're asking you to suggest a synonym for. This happens rarely, but does occur. So in this, they're asking me to find the word sardonically, and I'm like, whoa, wait, what is that? I've, I've actually never heard of that term before, or the word before. So obviously, you're going to follow the same steps as I said earlier, you're first going to read the context. This is because the new SAT does not really focus on testing vocabulary, it tests your ability to deduce meaning by looking at context. So you should always know that it is definitely possible, no matter how large or how remote the, or obscure the word is, it will almost always be possible to look at context and deduce meaning. So the bully, towering over six-year-old John, raised John's lunchbox, placing it on a high shelf. Eat now, he sardonically said. So we're thinking along the lines laughingly, tauntingly, meanly, along those lines really, angrily perhaps even. And so right now we do not know what the word sardonically means. From the context we have a general idea of what it should mean. It should be along these very negative but strong emotions. We can almost say it's not sadly he's bullying a kid. It is a kid who's likely to be sad, not the bully. So let's remove that because we know it does not fit the context of the bully. It's not something clever or ingenious either, really. It's more mocking, taunting. It's not intelligent as such. It's we, we can almost definitely say that angrily and mockingly are better fits over here. So we can just get rid of D as well. And now, this is a good example to show how looking at whether the word fits semantically does not always work because eat now he angrily said and eat now he mockingly said both make perfect sense and therefore we just need to explore the context. Now, we see that it's more taunting because I'm placing or the bully is placing the child's lunchbox in a high place out of his reach and he's like, yeah, good luck eating that now, huh? 
right and so it's not angry it just he's taunting he's kind of making fun of that kid so we see then mockingly appears to be a better fit in this context than angrily so we can select mockingly and if you look up the definition of sardonically it is along the lines of mockingly and so we have actually accurately deduced the meaning of the word and found a substitute without actually um, knowing what the word meant and therefore you can always get meaning out of context so just to recap on the strategy which you saw in strategy you with using which you can solve these questions you're going to read the questions avoid reading the options before you read the context so you're going to read the context and then perhaps read the options you're going to while you're reading the context you're going to try and think about what the word already means if you find the word you thought about in the options select it and move ahead if that is not possible begin eliminating by choices you can try looking at which word semantically fits but that's not really the best strategy over here and uh, just select the word that's best for the given context. With that, thank you. The next video will deal about what a word suggests about tone or meaning of a, of, of a certain passage. Um, till then, see ya.